His contribution is titled New Highly Active Catalyst in Direct Partial Oxidation of Methane to Synthesis Gas. The presentation will be given by Dr. Van Homen from the uh, University of Tennessee. catalysts and also uh, the oxidation of methane to synthesis gas CO and uh, hydrogen but in a direct catalytic partial oxidation direct means CO and hydrogen is primary product that's where we're aiming at um, the title in, in, in the booklet was a little bit different I think in doing this in doing this research we found a rather active or highly active if you want uh, direct partial oxidation catalyst which was a mixed oxide. My co-workers were uh, André Stechhuis, who is a PhD student, uh, Sechan, who is a, a colleague of mine, and Professor Lerscher, all at the University of Twente, where the research was performed. And I also have to acknowledge the European Union for sponsoring this research. The outline of my talk will be uh, rather uh, conventional. First, I will give you a short introduction. It will be a little bit different from what Professor Burns told you, but he covered most of the literature, I think. Then I will give you some experimental details going to the results um, which we obtained. And following from those results, we uh, uh, um, deduct a mechanism which I will give the details of. And in the end, I will draw some conclusions. Direct partial oxidation of methane to synthesis gas. One can divide uh, direct, uh, one can divide uh, partial oxidation of methane to synthesis gas if you want in uh, two uh, parts, you can uh, say that there is a couple of catalysts who will give di indirect partial oxidation and a couple of catalysts will, who will give direct uh, partial oxidation. Mainly the catalysts who will uh, give indirect partial oxidation are metals supported or non-supported and the main reactions as you can see is the oxidation of me complete combustion of methane to CO2 and water which is a rather exothermic reaction followed by reforming reactions of water and CO2 in which you obtain the CO and hydrogen you want. And you have a very difficult temperature control if you want to do this process in a commercial reactor and I will come to that in a minute. If you can do direct partial oxidation and you can use for that mixed oxide, um, then we aim at a reaction in which we get direct CO and hydrogen but uh, as you see already here, uh, that's not what we achieve. We achieve actually the oxidation of methane to CO, hydrogen and water. And I will come to that uh, later in more detail. <coughs> the difficult temperature control. You can see we plotted here the temperature versus the relative height in the reactor and you can see if you have a catalyst that gives first complete oxidation you have a very steep raise of the temperature in your reactor followed by the endothermic reactions, the reforming reactions of the methane with CO and water in which the temperature will go down uh, to a very uh, low temperature again and that means that you have a very hot spot in your reactor which is very difficult to control. And our aim in our research is to find a catalyst that can do partial oxidation without full combustion in which we don't have 
that high temperature increase because if you do uh, partial oxidation, you have a slightly exothermic reaction and that is much more easy to control. Now I come to the catalyst we tried. I already mentioned several times that we use mixed oxides and I give you here uh, the details of the preparation. But first I have to say why we choose for latinum and yttrium. And I think we choose for those catalysts on the basis of previous research in which we uh, already found in com uh, that, during com uh, that during performing complete combustion of methane or mixed oxides at, not com at incomplete of, uh, combustion of oxygen of conversion of oxygen, we found uh, a CO present in our reaction products. And we had a good idea that those mixed oxide if you use non-stoichiometric amounts of oxygen, would give uh, CO instead of CO2. Um, what we used were actually latinum impregnated on zirconia, calcite, and we got cells area of about 30 square meters, and a an, uh, commercial powder in which 12% yttrium is uh, stabilized in the zirconia. We calcined that for 15 hours at <coughs> 900 degrees and got a surface area of 20 square meters. We used an isothermal flow reactor with 170 millimeters per hour flow in which we used diluted uh, methane and nitrogen as an internal standard and we performed uh, contact time experiments which we carried out by changing the amount of catalyst. To show you that not all mixed oxides are good partial oxidation catalysts, I first show you the results of a latinum cobaltate uh, perovskite catalyst and we plotted here conversion yield versus temperature and you see that the reaction starts at about 400 but then uh, lights off at about 450 to complete conversion of oxygen and all the products we get are CO2, uh, water and uh, uh, not completely but a partial conversion of the methane and CO is actually not present. It means it is not present, it's in the X. So this is a good combustion catalyst but not more than that, not a partial oxidation catalyst. If you compare that with uh, latinum on a zirconia catalyst, which is represented in this plot, again, conversion and yield versus temperature, and you can see that already at incomplete oxygen conversion, we find CO, and actually, it's not completely clear from this plot, but uh, we'll give more evidence later, it looks as if CO is a primary product and CO2 is a secondary product and also water is formed. Uh, hydrogen is not plotted, hydrogen is actually following the CO uh, line in this plot. The, the next question is what is actually the, the active part in this uh, catalyst? Is it the latinum, is it the zirconia, or is it the combination of the two? And actually we tried latinum by itself um, for the partial oxidation and plotted again conversions uh, and yield versus temperature, it's the same type of plot. Again, you see at a much higher temperature, because we have a latinum with a little lower surface area, about 2 square meters a gram, a conversion of oxygen is starting, and again, CO is formed, but at this time, the CO2 is also present at the same time. Water is formed, and we get a bit, little bit higher conversion of the, of the methane. And also, at high temperature, we find uh, C2 products. Actually, latinum is known as a good uh, oxidative couplet, catalyst and that's what you see here also. If I show you the results for zirconia, you see that zirconia under the same conditions, plotted in the same way, has almost no activity and so we can more or less say that latinum oxide is probably the active phase for the partial oxidation but it needs the zirconia to get a good uh, selective partial oxidation catalyst. I summarize in this table uh, results of more catalysts than I showed you actually and I do that to give you an idea about what we think that's going on. We, we tried also the catalyst nickel on calcium like showed that did and we found that it gives full combustion followed by reforming. Latinum zirconia as you saw gives full oxidation next to direct partial oxidation and if we add cobalt reducible oxide reducible oxide on this support, we find full oxidation and reforming. The cobalt is during the reaction in the end of the reactor reduced, and the reduced cobalt will give reforming reactions. That gets even better if we uh, add a little bit more cobalt, and the cerium gives a little bit more full oxidation. 
Latinum cobalt out is only a full oxidation catalyst. Zirconia, almost no activity. And Latinum itself is a full oxidation and direct partial oxidation catalyst. And we think that, uh, um, that the Latinum uh, on Zirconia actually is uh, the active, that the Latinum oxide is the active phase. But Latinum was not uh, uh, so good as we hoped. And the yttrium catalyst, which we tried also, was a much better catalyst for partial, direct partial oxidation of methane to synthesis gas, which I show you in this plot. It's a 12% yttrium and zirconia. We plotted the yield versus temperature and the conversion. We took those two apart to show it a little bit better. You have here the oxygen conversion, methane conversion, and here the products. And as you can see, CO is starting directly at a little bit higher temperature, at a much higher amount than the CO2 in this case, and uh, water is produced also in high amounts and continues. And actually, um, from this you can already get an idea that uh, steam reforming uh, is not an, uh, a reaction that takes place on these oxides. Also, we tried CO2 reforming on this catalyst, that didn't work either. And uh, the shift reaction, the water shift reaction on this catalyst is far from equilibrium. So we have uh, the idea that there is a direct partial oxidation to CO and to CO2. To prove that a little bit more, or to make, to give you a little bit more evidence uh, for the direct oxidation to CO, we did contact time measurements on the same catalyst with the diluted helium, in which we uh, changed the amount of catalyst. And what you have here are the contact times versus the yield, but it could have been the conversion because selectivity is actually constant over the whole contact time. And what you actually see is that CO is on this catalyst formed uh, in a much uh, uh, higher yield than the CO2. But what's more important, both uh, of the curves go through the origin, which points to parallel reaction of CO and CO2 formation. <coughs> what I said already, I show you in this uh, transparency that uh, <coughs> the selectivity over the whole, uh, uh, the selectivity is rather constant, and we uh, plotted here the selectivity over the same catalyst as a function of the methane conversion. And as you can see, CO and water selectivities are rather constant. And the same <coughs> is the case uh, with temperature, as you should expect for parallel uh, reactions. If these are parallel reactions, one is able to determine independently uh, the activation energies of the two reactions, that means of the oxidation to CO and of the oxidation to CO2. And if we do that, we get activation energies which are not so far apart. Uh, the activation energy for CO is a little higher, but the experimental error is uh, close uh, to uh, that both activation energies are in the same range. Um, <coughs> from uh, is add of this activation energies which we determined uh, we are able to uh, to calculate actually our uh, obtained results over the catalyst. But before the, we do that, we have to uh, have to uh, give a model, and that's actually given in this transparency. What we assume is that methane can, uh, by one reaction, completely be oxidized to CO2 and hydrogen, and parallel to that, to CO and water uh, uh, hydrogen. That's what we. Uh, first supposed, and there can be a, a, a following up reaction, consecutive reaction, in which hydrogen and CO can be oxidized to CO2 and water, but as you have seen from the plots, that's a rather negligible reaction, and at higher temperatures, there's also partly a side reaction to the C2 uh, products, like uh, ethane and ethylene. We uh, derived at four rate constants, activation energies were known, and we uh, take a simple first order in all reactants, and we try to, to, to uh, calculate the DC DT over uh, 1,000 segments uh, to get the output of our reactors, of our reactor. And if we did that, we got the next uh, results. And as you can see, they didn't fit too well, because we aimed at, uh, at uh, the prediction of the CO2 and the CO formation. 
And as you can see, the lines are following the CO2 and the CO formations rather nicely. But then the, uh, the oxygen conversion, methane conversion is not correct. And what is even more uh, dramatic is that the uh, hydrogen conversion is much too low and the water conversion is much too high if these are the measured points and these are the predicted points. That means that something else is going on and from that we deducted that we better could go to the second mechanism and it's all the same. The same reaction uh, rates, constants are used and same activation energies. There's only one difference in this mechanism and that's we suppose that the first reaction in which the partial oxidation of methane takes place, it doesn't go to CO and hydrogen alone, but directly to an equimolar amount of water and the rest is the same. If we suppose this, we get a rather good fit of our results. And from that, we have the impression that the reaction that is actually going on is the reaction for, uh, partial oxidation of methane to CO, water, and hydrogen. As you can see now, the water lines and the hydrogen lines are more or less following the experimental points. There's a small difference here, and that could be caused by perhaps a further oxidation of hydrogen, which we didn't include. Now, you, based on all those results, and on what is already known in literature, we try to establish a mechanism and we have already uh, some evidence in the literature on, uh, from Matsura and Moffat that partial oxidation of methane over uh, hydroxyapatite uh, goes also to CO, hydrogen and water and small amounts of formaldehyde were found on this catalyst. And if you look at the thermodynamics you see that oxidation of <coughs> methane to formaldehyde is thermodynamically favorable and also the decomposition of formaldehyde to CO and hydrogen is thermodynamically favorable. And another report in literature from Wade et al. Uh, gives direct uh, formation of CO uh, from over latinum and yttrium uh, 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 oxides um, in which formaldehyde is an intermediate. So we think using uh, this formaldehyde intermediate <coughs> in our mechanism we can say that probably the reaction of methane oxidation, partial methane oxidation over oxidic materials goes uh, in the following way. Methane will uh, react with adsorbed oxygen or lattice oxygen, that's also possible, uh, lose one of its hydrogen forming an adsorbed uh, CH3 group and an OH group which will be oxidized completely to CO2 and water. That's one of the reactions and the other one parallel the same time the CO, uh, CH3 adsorbed uh, and OH can react with oxygen to uh, a formaldehyde intermediate on the surface which and water which can decompose them to CO, hydrogen and water and the nice thing about formaldehyde is that it gives you directly the equimolar amounts of hydrogen and water that we actually found in our uh, calculations in our fitting uh, of the curves. But it's not ne it, it can also be possible that the oxidation is without an intermediate of the formaldehyde directly <coughs> to CO, hydrogen and water, because at the moment we have no evidence for a formaldehyde intermediate. <coughs> Having said all this, I, I, I will draw some conclusions, <coughs> which are not all directly from what I showed you, but actually we think that we can say that latinum on zirconia is a catalyst that gives a CO selectivity, but the, uh, the CO selectivity will decrease with conversion. That's different from the yttrium uh, catalyst. Um, and actually, the CO selectivity will also decrease if we add more latinum. If we go from 2.8 to 10%, we have a lower selectivity to CO, which you already could see from the experiments from latinum oxide alone. Yttrium. Uh, stabilized zirconia is a, a, a better catalyst for uh, partial oxidation to CO. Um, it uh, gives a much higher selectivity to CO than latinum on zirconia uh, at higher methane conversions. And uh, what we showed you was that the conversion to zirconia is actually, uh, to uh, CO, sorry, over the yttrium zirconia is actually constant 
risk conversion in which we think we have good evidence that CO is a primary product and that on this oxidic catalyst no reforming uh, of CO2 or water takes place. Actually the reaction at which we arrive at our CO is not as we hoped uh, going to CO and hydrogen but going to CO, hydrogen and water which is a little bit more exothermic and will be more difficult to control than when it was going only to CO and hydrogen but it's already an improvement if you compare it with complete combustion followed by reforming and the mechanism we suggest is a FIA give me uh, methyl uh, group on the oxides and probably a an formaldehyde intermediate I think that's it. Thank you for your attention. Uh, on these oxides, one might expect redox chemistry in a lot of cases with lattice oxygen participating. And lanthanum, of course, is hard to reduce. Are you, are you kind of arguing that if you get redox chemistry where you where you have lattice oxygen, that you're going to get more total oxidation. That, that, that seems to fit your, your screening of the catalyst. Yeah. Now, lanthanum, as you, as you say, lanthanum is hard to reduce, and the same is for lithium. On zirconia, it's not so easily to reduce that. But we think that part of the lattice oxygen is involved exactly in, in activating the methane, so the first step, and that the, the, the further partial oxidation is by adsorbed oxygen on the supports and not by the lattice oxygen. So we don't think in terms of mass from paper mechanism, but using adsorbed oxygen. Because if you use reducible oxide, that's what I tried to say also, um, you, you get in this uh, equimolar mixture of methane and oxygen, you get a reduction of your, your reducible oxide. And uh, in the second part of the bed, you get then the reforming reactions. And that's what I tried to put forward also that on these not so easy to reduce oxides, you can do partial oxidation without having reforming reactions. And that's then the evidence that we actually made CO as a primary product and not via reforming and etc. Have you done Bill Williams Dupont? A uh, couple questions. Um, first of all, how do you think you get that formaldehyde off the surface? Second of all, what you proposed effectively is a mechanistic limit. And uh, do you have any thoughts on how to break that mechanistic limit, either via doing doping the catalyst or perhaps putting another catalyst into a shift reaction on the back end of it, or something like that? Yeah, I, I, the first question I forgot now. The first question was about the formula I can. Formula, are you going to get that off the surface? Yeah, I think it's not necessary to get it off the surface. If we can uh, get some evidence from that it's actually on the surface, it can still be an intermediate for the uh, for the reaction to CO and hydrogen and water. I think, and that's only what I'm trying to put forward. The next part of your question, I think that's uh, yeah, we have some ideas. If we have parallel reactions and. We think we have, are pretty well uh, uh, given rather good evidence that we have parallel reactions. We, we can aim at uh, poisoning one of the reactions and actually the reaction to CO2 forming formation. That's one approach. And the other one is, in, in, in practice, you can use this catalyst in front in your reactor and after that a reforming uh, uh, catalyst to reform the rest of the CO2 and uh, the water that's present and end up with 100% conversion to CO and hydrogen. Only the temperature control will be much better. Then. Thank you. Thank you.